2020 seems a big year for space, uh, space exploration. Let's start with China. It's aiming to carry out more than 40 launches this year, outstripping any other space player. Are you surprised? And what missions do you find most intriguing? Well, that's right. 2020 is going to be a big year for a lot of countries for space exploration, and certainly it's going to be a big one for China, uh, coming off the heels of the successful Long March 5 rocket launch, as you pointed out, was so pivotal. Very important to have that rocket. Without it, the Chang'e 5 mission could not launch, neither could the Mars mission, or the first elements of the, of the coming Chinese space station. So that was a big deal. Chang'e 4 is, continues to operate successfully, doing a lot of firsts. Uh, no less important and impressive was the launch of the Chu Chao relay satellite at the second Lagrange point, uh, relaying signals back and forth between the spacecraft on the far side of the moon and the Earth. And Chang'e 5 the, will be a, a sample return mission, only the, uh, I believe, the third sample return mission in history. And it'll be automated and it'll be pretty impressive. So a lot of exciting things happening and also the Mars probe, of course, that China is also planning. Leroy, also an exciting week uh, with NASA's Parker Solar Probe as we begin receiving data. What are we trying to learn about the sun? Well, we're trying to learn more details about how the sun works. You know, we really don't know that much. Already the Parker Solar Probe has returned some very interesting data. Uh, we've seen patterns in the fluid motion uh, inside the corona that we hadn't expected. And I expect a lot more interesting results will come out of that exploration. Well, oh, perhaps, you know, one of my favorite space developments later this year, hundreds of small satellites are scheduled to go into orbit to provide global Internet coverage. Uh, tell us more about that and how will that change connectivity for us mere mortals down on Earth? <laughs> right. Many, country, many, many entities are planning to launch these constellations. Of course, Starlink, uh, Elon Musk's Starlink company is launching a lot of satellites. Uh, his plan is to cover the globe pretty much with Internet connectivity. The advantage of these low-flying constellations is they're much faster in sending signals around uh, you know, to each other than fiber optic cables laid on the ground or underground and under the sea. And so uh, they're not the only company trying to do this, but they're certainly the most visible and perhaps will be the first. Leroy, in the defense arena, the U.S. Space Force on paper, now a reality, it's a whole new branch of the military. Uh, but the Pentagon, a bit late to the game. I mean, China's PLA Strategic Support Force has been running for the last four years. Um, is this the new face of space race? I don't think so. The Space Force, as I understand it, is basically taking over what part of the U.S. Air Force was already doing. So it's a new branch of the service, uh, but its mission is going to carve out pieces of the U.S. Air Force uh, that was, you know, they were doing. And so uh, I'm sure they will be expanded, but, uh, you know, it's an evolution of, of the force structure, and it's an interesting thing that you were creating a new branch of the service. It's a bit like the Marines being part of the Navy, and so we'll have to see how all that goes. Uh, very briefly, Leroy, you know, we often talk about space programs as though they exist in isolation. All these powers developing their own systems to go further, higher, longer. How much cooperation is there and how much uh, uh, has that changed our, uh, advanced our knowledge of space? Well, there's been a lot of international cooperation, of course, some of the most visible cooperations between the U.S. and Russia, uh, as long, uh, along with our other partner nations on the ISS program, the, the countries of the European Space Agency, the Japanese and Canadian Space Agencies. And my hope is that countries like China can also join these coalitions, China and the other spacefaring nations that are coming up. And I hope that we can work together because, you know, working together in something important like civil space, something very visible, also helps, I think, to make relationships better in other parts of, uh, of uh, these uh, nations as well. Leroy Chow, thank you so much for your time.